So the number one question people have about EVs is how do you charge them? And it can be a little complicated. We've got different types of connectors. We've got different types of chargers. We've got Tesla superchargers. How does everything work? And it can be a little confusing. So I'm gonna to try to explain some of that today. So unlike gas vehicles, electric cars are charged at an EV charging station. And these are located a lot of different places. They can be in shopping malls, they can be at your house, they can be at your workplace. They can be a lot of different places that a gas station cannot be because they don't take up as much room. They're basically just a parking spot reserved for EVs with the charger on it, which is convenient, yes, but unlike a gas vehicle, you can't be fueled up in just a couple minutes. It's gonna take a little bit more time because you've got a battery and you don't have a fuel tank. Just a quick disclaimer before I give any numbers or facts or anything like that, all of these facts and numbers are conditional, so it's all gonna depend on what kind of car you have, uh, the battery type, battery age, all that kind of stuff. Just like miles per gallon in a car, it is completely up to your driving habits, all that kind of stuff. So a lot of factors go into it. These are just kind of some averages to give you a better idea of what to expect at different chargers. So EV chargers are classified into three levels. So level one is your standard 120 volt outlet, what you see all around your house. Uh, and this is more of a trickle charge. So if you plug your car in, in your garage to a standard outlet, you're gonna get about one kilowatt of power. It's just gonna trickle charge your battery. And it typically takes over eight hours to fully charge your battery and get you to that 100%. The good thing with this though is that most cars that are electric come with an adapter so you can basically do this anywhere and you're ready to charge your car as soon as you take delivery of it. Next is level two. This is anywhere from three kilowatts to 20 kilowatts. So a little more power here, you're gonna get a full charge anywhere from three hours to eight hours. And then there's level three, and these are also known as DC fast chargers. So if you see that nomenclature, uh, just know it's similar to level three. And with those, you're getting around 20 kilowatts of power, which is even more, enough to usually charge a car anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. So with level one and two, every EV on the market can charge at level one and level two. Level three brings it up a whole nother notch and not all EVs are capable of charging at this level. So if you do get an EV, make sure you check your user manual, uh, check online, learn more about this car, and make sure it is able to charge at a level three if you wanna be able to do those quick charges, uh, especially if you're doing road trips and don't wanna stop for a full hour to recharge your car. So with those three levels, there are a lot of different connectors that you can use to interface with those EV charging stations. So like I said, with a level one, you usually have an adapter in your car that can take the plug that goes into the car and put it into a normal outlet and you can charge your car doing that. But like I said earlier, that is not the ideal way to do it and it's not gonna charge your car very fast. So if you move to a level two, you've got a couple more options. Uh, first, there's the SAE J1772. And this was created by the Society of Automotive Engineers. It's basically a car charging standard. Uh, so it's a standard plug that's used on a wide variety of manufacturers and most cars are gonna have an adapter or already have this plug built into the car. At level two, you've also got a NEMA 1450, uh, which is basically used for RVs and you can also use those. There's a lot of adapters available for that as well. And lastly, Tesla actually makes a high powered wall connector uh, that runs on this level two and it's gonna be able to charge your car in your garage a lot faster than your standard outlet will. So Tesla owners have an option there as well. So at level three, you've got three different options. First is CHATMO, which is a really strange abbreviation, but it stands for charge day move, uh, which is supposed to be equivalent to charge and go, basically meaning that it's a fast charger, you're able to charge then go. Uh, but it's most popular in Asian markets. So any Asian make, of a car you get is most likely to have this type of connector in the car. So this is your Nissans, your Toyotas, Mitsubishi, all those Asian makes typically have that type of connector. And this was created to be a competitor to the SAE standard at the level three, which is the CCS or 
combo CCS. And that's most popular in the Americas and European markets. So any American-made EVs, you're typically going to see this type of connector. So along with those two standard options, the third one is Tesla Supercharger, which is a proprietary connector uh, only on Tesla models. So Tesla owners kind of have that luxury that they're able to use that supercharging network that other cars cannot, but also moving to other connectors is a little more difficult and you've got to use adapters and that sort of thing. So I thought it was really interesting researching this topic. I didn't think these chargers were so complicated. I had heard of the different levels before, but learning about all the different connectors and what levels they're used at, all that sort of thing was really interesting. I think we're gonna see what we're seeing with phones is when they first came out, every single one had a different kind of connector. And nowadays we're moving towards a single connector. Right now we really only have two competing standards. We have the USB-C and we've got Apple's lightning connector. So hopefully as EVs move into the mass market, we're gonna see these standards kind of combine or hopefully that one beats out the other so that we don't have to deal with looking up the charging station before we go there and worrying about if the connector fits or it works with our car. So I think one day EVs will have the luxury that gas cars have being able to charge at any station throughout the world, but right now we don't have that luxury. So again, I think my advice would be if you do have an EV or looking at getting one, get familiar with what kind of connector it has on the car, what kind of port it's got, and what kind of charging stations you can visit. Get familiar with the ones in your area and kind of think of a plan of how you're gonna charge the car throughout the week, uh, especially if you're using it as a commuter vehicle. See if you've got options at your workplace. What options do you have at home for possibly installing a charger? What do you do when you visit your family that might be out of town? All that kind of thing. Uh, you definitely got to bring that all into account when you're looking at an EV. So hopefully this cleared the air for some of you that are either looking at an EV or have one and were very confused about the charging network. Also, I'm going to link below chargehub.com's website and the page that I got a lot of this information on. I thought the guide they put together was very helpful. So if you are confused with anything I said, definitely check out that source as well. Uh, definitely help me out. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button if it helped you out. Hit that subscribe button if you like my videos and want to see more like this uh, related to electric vehicles. And if anything I said was confusing, there's a big possibility that it was, please leave me a comment and I will try my best to explain uh, more about how this charging works. So thanks again, guys, and I will see you in the next video.